Hey guys, it's Bizmoto. Uh, I just want to give you some updates on the Vader. I decided instead of leaving it stock, I decided I was going to do a little bit of changes to it. Uh, for one, I'm going to put all new white on the ground plastics on the front, like the front fender. Uh, but all the other plastics are coming from uh, Taiwan, so it'll be about a week or two before I get them. And uh, another update is uh, I'm going to be doing some uh, mods to the motor. Actually, not even using this motor. I'll be changing it out. Seems like a lot of people on YouTube are doing a lot of mods and stuff to their bikes over the winter. And kind of made me decide that I should probably do something. Um, this motor wasn't bad. I was able to get up to 58. That was like my top speed with it so far. And I think I only got... Uh, I don't know how many miles I got on this thing so far. I took the key out already, so. But, uh, I'm thinking I only got, like, maybe two or 300 miles on this thing. I'm not sure. But it's been good for me, and it, it ran good. But, uh, like I said, top speed was, like, 58 for me. Uh, I don't remember what the average was. It's been a while since I wrote it, so. But anyways, guys, what I'm going to be doing with the motor is I am going to be installing this motor. This motor here is the ZS-190 uh, motor. Uh, it's supposed to put out 18 horsepower. I don't really know the torque figures on it right now. Uh, really solid motor. It looks really good. Uh, the only downfall I could see of this motor that I don't like is that it's raw steel. And I honestly thought from the pictures it was painted uh, silver, and I kind of wish it was. Because uh, it's going to be a really hard to keep clean and nice. So that's going to kind of bug me a little bit, I think. But uh, other than that, uh, performance-wise, I think this thing will be a monster. I mean, this motor is huge. Uh, compared to the motor that's in there now, uh... Yeah, this thing's a beast. <laughs> so, and this one's even got uh, a filter you could change for the oil. And the motor comes with the oil cooler. Uh, you just unbolt this, take this off, and bolt up your oil cooler. Uh, uh, one thing, another thing I was disappointed about with this motor is when I would have thought they would have gave you a shift lever for it, um, but they don't. Uh, this motor is a electric start and also kick start that's what this is for this is for your kick start uh, they do give you the kick start lever uh, things I don't know if I'm gonna put it on or not but uh, I'll, I think I'm just gonna leave it with the uh, electric start and if I ever have a problem with the battery I can always push start it so or if I have trouble with the starter I could always push start it so I'll just go that route if I need to but yeah guys, this thing comes with a whole box of parts. Uh, you get like a wiring harness. You, uh, yeah, that's nothing. Uh, you get, uh, this is just the oil cooler in here, in this box. Uh, you get the oil cooler lines. Uh, your, you get your kick starter. Uh, a pod filter. Uh, carburetor. Somewhere in here. Oh, right, here's the carburetor. The carburetor for this thing is like huge compared to the stock one. Uh, yeah, it's rather large. <laughs> um, and you get like a CDI box and a uh, rectifier, I believe it's called. Uh, not sure. And then you get, I'm not sure what half of these things are for. I, I think these might have, oh yeah, these are for the oil cooler. Okay, yeah. And you get your air intake manifold that's here. And your gaskets for it. And the spark plug wire with the coil. Uh, but from what I was told, I could use all the stuff on here. Uh, the wiring harness is made for a dirt bike, I was told. So there's no blinker lights or anything, but it's kind of cool that they still gave it to you because there may be some pieces in there I could use eventually for something else, you know, or if I got to fix something. So that's kind of cool. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, guys, that's the project for 
the rest of the winter. Hopefully it'll be ending pretty damn soon, I hope. Uh, but yeah, more information on the motor. I was told that the motor will uh, get the bike up to 80 to 85 miles an hour. So that will be a, a huge improvement over stock. And this motor does just bolt right in. Um, two bolts it looks like. Uh, one here, one here. Uh, <clears throat> I will have to get rid of my stock air box, which I didn't want to do because I, 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 you know, I like the idea of having an enclosed air box, but that's okay because that will give me room to put the oil cooler on the cross brace right here that the fenders normally bolt to so they don't flap around. So that will be a good place to bolt the, uh, to bolt the oil cooler. And uh, like I said, I ordered all new plastics. Everything's being replaced as plastic, you know, the, the plastics up here even, just to make sure it all lines up. Uh, the tail, the tail uh, battery box or whatever you want to call it, that's all being replaced on the bottom. Uh, everything. Uh, tail light, I'm going to go with the same style. But a red one, and it's actually bigger than this tail light. This tail light's really small, actually. And I, I've seen other grams that had the tail light that would be installing in it. Uh, I got a red one and a clear one. I don't know if I'm going to use the red or clear one yet. I'm still deciding. And one more mod I might make this year is maybe a set of Pro Taper bars. I mean, these bars that are on this bike are actually pretty solid and nice. So I may not change them, but I might. Because I'd like to have a crossbar on there. And uh, and I'm also thinking of maybe putting an actual Grom swing arm on. I don't know if I'm going to go with an aftermarket uh, Grom swing arm or an original. But I assume an original one will be better than this one. Because this one, uh, the chain tensioners don't work very well at all. And uh, also... Uh, I tried putting the Grom tensioners in there, and they're so tight you gotta like hammer them in almost. So I don't think it's supposed to be quite that tight. But anyways, guys, I just want to give you a quick update on everything, and uh, I'll, I'll be posting more videos. I'm not gonna do like uh, I'm not gonna do like a build series or anything like that, like showing you how I did everything because I'm I'm just too big of a klutz and it would be a disaster for me to try filming it while I'm working on it. So, yeah. But anyways, guys, uh, I'm going to let you go and I'll see you in the next video. I just wanted to keep this one short and just let you guys be informed in what's going on. Uh, pretty much my, uh, uh, what's this thing, Mad Dog is still pretty much the same. I haven't changed anything since the ankle biter and I, I plan on keeping that bike totally stock uh, except for like the ankle biter that's on it. And, uh, you know, the ankle biter and what else did I put on there this year? I can't even remember. Oh, and the white walls. That's all I changed on it. That's all I plan on changing on it for this year. Uh, I want to have one bike that I don't have to mess around with. And I, I think it's going to be that one and possibly the Zummer I think I'm going to leave alone as long as it doesn't blow up on me or anything. But I won't be putting 2,000 miles on the Zummer this year. So that bike will be more like my cruising around the area bike where I, I don't have to do like 50 miles an hour constantly. Um, I might even detune it uh, back down to the 50cc just for reliability. I mean, why beat the crap out of that bike and push it when I got these other bikes that could go much faster, you know? And I could just use the Zummer for enjoying putting around the, the neighborhood here, which would be great. So, alright guys, I'm going to let you go. And I will see you in the next video. Uh, wish you all well with your projects. And talk to you later. Bye.